You're so subdued. It was very cool, Brian. Oh, boy, you're cutting it in today, aren't you, Megan? Welcome to Season 2, Episode 2, Products versus Services. My name is Brad Hogan. I'm a business guy from Central Florida, and I talk about what it takes to be in business and risking it all. How fun it is. I'm excited about this episode specifically, and just want to dive right into it. Products versus services. Product is a tangible item. We can feel it. We can touch it. We can hold it versus service, which is basically something I'm going to do. Either going to do it on the computer or with my hands or get it done another way. What's a business model look like for you? For a lot of us in the service industry, it could be a combination of the two. So my car mechanic that's service because he's got the know-how. I don't have that know-how. He provides a service. But then he also has a product. If I need my brakes changed, well, what kind of brake pads are you putting on there? Why are you putting that rotor on there? The tires and the choices he gave me, why did he give me those choices? That's a little twist on it, right? The guy down the street that puts on tires, service business, He's got a product to sell. His product is different. So it's a business model. It's kind of figuring out where you're at in that scope, what you offer. But primarily, we're in one of two categories. So as far as the business model goes, do you have inventory? Are you buying products to resell? Or is it just you with a cell phone, laptop, ink pen? Today... The ink pen's gone. You know, we think back in the day, there was the door-to-door -door sales guy. You had the guy knock on the door that's selling the Hoover vacuum cleaner. He's selling that to the housewife that's home. That's product. Then you've got the door-to-door -door insurance salesman. He's knocking on the door. All he's got is a briefcase with a contract and an ink pen in there. He's selling a service. Two different things. Today, if you're strictly in the service business, and you're selling it online, or you're managing a company, you could be about anywhere. Laptop and a cell phone. Can you do that with a product business? Today you can, thanks to the internet. But you've still got those goods that you've got to get somewhere. Whether you're getting them to Amazon, or you're getting them to Walmart, and they're, they're selling your product, or whether you're selling it online, you could be fulfilling orders or you could have a third party fulfillment. Primarily, if we've got a product and people are shopping for the product, let's just say we're on the shelf at the store, use the grocery store. So many times that comes down to price. Reputation and branding can come into play. It depends on the consumer versus service service is heavy, heavy, heavy about reputation, recommendations, referrals, etc. And one of the most important things you can do is communication. Communication is key. And what all goes into communication? Yes, it's one-to-one -one communication with your buyer. In my case, it's homeowners right? That I'm selling a service to. Also, it's everything that leads up to there. So what does branding look like? Well, we know Coca-Cola. Who founded Coca-Cola? Who's the guy with the formula? Who's a big investor? Most of us can't answer many of those questions, but we know what Coca-Cola is. We're buying the product. You could say we're buying the brand at this point. If we talk about ketchup's probably not a good one because I think of Heinz immediately. I think of hunts. You know, what else is out there? Apple is out there. Their marketing is incredible, right? Uh, in my household, I say, are you drinking the juice or are you not drinking the juice? You drinking the apple juice? Well, for a long time, I didn't. I am. I'm a drinker, right? 
let's drink the juice. It's all Apple and then everything's integrated. It's all tied together. At what point is it service for me because everything's tied together, but they are really, really selling products. I mean, whether it's our iPhone or our laptop or it was iPod back in the day versus a service, I think of software, is software a product or is it a service? Certain things we will buy certain brands sometimes so a product let's think of automobiles some people will buy a ford for the car some people will buy it based on the service department i get great service i'm a guy that drives a lot of miles and man can't have a bad service department can't have my truck tied up all day long when i take it in there do they give you value do they provide service that's picking up your vehicle? Do they give you a loaner? And what are they doing? If we sell a product, depending on what category we're in, we'll go deeper into business models later, but what kind of service is provided with that product? So the higher end product we have, the more service expectations we typically have. So what happens when your product is not great and your service is not great? What happens? I mean, that company's going to die if they don't turn it around. Tesla is a great example. Look, Tesla started out, you know, the product was, let's say they were figuring it out. The service was backed up because they had so many product issues. So service wasn't perceived as being good. And then we fast forward to today, whether you're a Tesla fan or you're not, we've all got to agree that they're the leader in electric vehicles. They lead the market. Facts speak for themselves. When we have a product that we're selling, we can also measure the analytics. We can, and, and whether it's on the computer or not, you know, what are my sales? If I'm online, what is my sell-through rate? We find that with a product as a whole, a category, your sales or your click-through is going to be higher than the marketing it takes for services. Don't get me wrong. There's some great service companies out there. And we may be talking about your small business in your area, what you need to do, but it takes more marketing for your service because it's more about branding you in most cases. Okay. Aside from the general motors of the world versus Ford or Chrysler or Tesla. We're talking about our small businesses right here in our hometown. What's that service look like? Other factor is what's your parameters? I mean, what's your distance? How far can you go? If you've truly got a service business, if you're repairing roofs or repairing AC units or you're an electrician or you're a plumber, if I'm in the Midwest, I can't be on the East Coast unless I open another location. If I'm selling a product online, well, I can ship that anywhere. They can get my product everywhere. Different business model, different things. I would encourage you, if you're in the service business, you need to brand you. There are some things within the service business that are very difficult to brand. Sometimes product versus a service business, I think a lot of people miss this. This is key. It can be difficult to brand your service business. And I'm going to give you an example. What kind of car do you drive? You know what kind of car you drive. It's a Chevy. It's a Ford. It's a Benz. It's a Lexus. It's a whatever it is. You know what kind of car you want or what you're looking at. Hey, that car is nice looking. What is that? You know what it is. Do you have a roof on your house or on your apartment building or on your condo? or on your office, what kind is it? If you got a shingle roof, is it Owens Corning? Is it GAF? Is it CertainTeed? Is it ICO? Is it Tamco? Is it Atlas? Most of us probably don't know. Oh, by the way, who put it on? I, I dare say there's some people who have a new roof put on in the last year. They can't even tell you who put it on or what kind it is. Back to the branding. You know, how important is that and how important are relationships? You've got to build those relationships in the service industry. 
Yes, you need to do what you say you're going to do. What all goes into it? I talk about pricing, what goes into pricing, but those things that go into my pricing become who I am in the service business. Who are you? What goes into your brand? If you're in the service business, think about what goes into your pricing. For me, it's product, it's service, and it's warranty. My service is going to be how I install it. My warranty is how long I'm going to guarantee it. And of course, the product is whatever I'm using, whichever manufacturer I'm using to install it. That's what that looks like versus someone that's strictly got a product-based business. We know about the product. I mean, does, does a Tesla function or does it have a lot of recalls? Does a Ford have more power versus the Chevy versus the Ram versus, it depends on what product we're talking about. You talking about a 1500 or you talking about a 2500? etc etc once you know who you are and where you're going you can define how to get there that's the most important part to decipher who you are in order for you to be successful the buying process is different for service versus product if you're in the service business referrals are everything we all know in the service business the referrals the strongest because many times that prospect is not shopping. They're not shopping as much. They've got that referral from a friend, a family member, someone they trust, and they now trust you till you give a reason not to. That's why the communication is important. Versus a product, they can get online and read about the product. I think about the big eight accounting firms. So whether it's KPMG or Pricewaterhouse or Whoever it is, those are accounting firms. Those are service-based businesses. We need our corporation to come in and do the audit, et cetera. What am I getting for that? But those are the exceptions. But for most of us out here that are in our communities providing service, what's that look like? Even if you're smaller and you're online and you've got a global reach, you may have some kind of product to offer but you're primarily in the service business. Know who you are. Know who your target audience is. Know what you have to offer. And then keep building on that. Get a good solid foundation. Vision statement, mission statement, purpose statement. What do those look like? Okay. What's our mission? What are we doing here? What's our vision look like? What are we forecasting for the future? Our purpose statement, you know, primarily including... Um, my products or services and employees, right? I build that based on people and services we offer. Those are the foundations and fundamentals to build this company to take it forward. You guys, I just want to encourage you. Relationships, so important, whether it's with your people or whether it's with your end user, your clients, your customers, those relationships are everything. Talking about pricing, what does it cost? In some cases, Service, depending on what you're getting, can be a lot more valuable than a product. Let's understand where we're at. Yes, it's true that if I don't have a laptop today and I need one, that could be more valuable than anything because it can lead to the rest of the world. But supply and demand, they're everywhere. What am I willing to pay for that service? Just know who you are and what you're doing. 